Let's jump into an Easter inspired dip powder mani with some nail art stamping. The colors I'm going to be using for today's Manny are from the Vivid Glam Co. March Duo and as soon as I saw this duo I knew I had to have it. I mean lavender and yellow are like such a beautiful pair. They are perfect for spring. They really screamed Easter to me which really is what inspired this Manny. So the first color I'm using is Signs of Spring, which is a lavender dip powder, but it's got fine yellow glitters in there. But what I really love about this powder is it's not really like a glitter or what I would consider a glitter. It's more of like a solid dip powder with like accents of glitter. So I love that it's just kind of sporadic throughout creating like this unique look that you don't normally see. Usually it's a solid, a shimmer, or a glitter, but I love how this is kind of mixed to make the yellow glitter is like an accent. And it almost sort of, against the lavender, it almost looks like it's glowing. I should also mention, you can see up at the top that I am using my Vivid Glam Co. dip liquids. So I am doing some nail art stamping at the end, but I will still be using my dip top coat. So I'll show you how you do nail art stamping and still use dip top coat. You don't always have to use gels. Really for me, it's just like a preference of whatever I feel like using, but I'm going to show you how I do stamping and dip top coat on top of that without smudging it. So I'm just finishing up my first dip of Signs of Spring. So it's only going to go on my middle finger and ring finger. And after every dip, I want to make sure that I'm cleaning up my cuticle area. So I'm using this precision tool for Vivid Glam Coat as well. But I just want to make sure I don't have any excess product on my skin. So once that's fully dry, I'm going to make sure I dust off the excess powder. So you can see here on the first layer, it is a little bit sheer, but I do get full opacity in my second dip. So in my normal process, I like to do two layers of color and cap and clear and this will be the same. Although since this actually has glitter in it as well, I'm gonna wait till the end when I'm finished with all my fingers and I'll cap everything in clear together. Check out the glitter from this duo. So this is Garden Girly and it is so gorgeous and so unique and I wanted it on as many fingers as possible. So it's gonna go on the rest of my fingers. So this is such a unique mix. So it's got medium hex glitters and then it's got smaller glitters. So there's matte glitters. So the, the lavender hex glitter is like a matte glitter. And then it's also got yellow and then a metallic dark purple smaller glitter. So it's just so cool. I just love the mix of this. So because it is a little bit chunkier, I am using my chunky glitter method. So for my first layer, I'm pouring over, but you can see even with a pour over, I do still get a lot of those larger glitter pieces because it's just so jam packed but it doesn't end up too thick. So I always make sure that I'm patting them down, making sure they're laying flat. If there's any that's hanging over, I kind of want to like tuck them in or either tuck them in or knock them off just to make sure I've got coverage. So, I mean, I could have actually gotten away with probably one layer and then just hand place some glitters to fill in those spots, but I do end up doing two layers on all my fingers just because I wanted more coverage on this just because it's so gorgeous. 
I know chunky glitters can be more difficult to work with and some people tend to avoid them because of that, but I feel like that they're just so beautiful and they're just so unique that they're worth the little bit of extra work. But of course, not all chunky glitters or any glitters are created equal. I feel like the glitters that are thinner, more flexible, are easier to work with. There are some glitters or like some mylar pieces that are like less flexible, a little more difficult to to work with but I will say these in this duo are really easy to work with they're thinner they're a little more flexible they provide good coverage so I wouldn't be afraid of this one I just made sure I capped the glitters in clear really well and then I used the chunky glitter baggy method when I activated to do that if you're not familiar with that I'll leave a video up above in the cards of that method because it's a total game changer when you're working with glitters so you don't file through them and that they lay as flat as possible. Now that I'm done with my first layer, I wanna make sure everything is completely dry and then I'm gonna dust off any of that excess powder and I may knock off a glitter or two, but that's okay because we're gonna do a second layer. So for my second layer, I'm gonna pour the rest of my jar into my Chaos Gemerald because I'm gonna lay my finger flat into the glitter rather than dipping or pouring over. And that way I pick up more of those chunkier pieces to get even better coverage. I went ahead and capped everything in clear, activated and filed and buffed. So here's how the Manny's looking. So now we're going to get into some nail art stamping on my middle finger and ring finger. Maniology was kind enough to send me this spring stamping bundle kit and this is one of the plates in there and I was so excited to use it because I think these Easter designs are just so stinking cute. So this kit had everything. It had three stamping plates, three stamping polishes, as well as the jelly stamper and scraper card, which you'll see that I'm using in this. So I'm going to use this bunny design, but I'm going to do a little bit of reverse stamping. 
So I'm just using the straight up black and I'm picking up that outline of the bunny. So you can see I've got that here. And so I do wanna take a little bit of scotch tape because you do see that I picked up some excess design that's not part of the bunny. So I wanna make sure that I remove it so I don't transfer that to my nail. And then I'm gonna fill it in with some colors and I'm gonna use some of the colors that were included in the kit. So the first one I'm gonna be using is this really cute pink called Rosebud. So I'm gonna use my liner brush and then I'm gonna put a little bit of that pink on my stamper plate just to make it easier to pick up. I'm not actually gonna stamp with it, but I want to be able to pick it up with my liner brush easily. But stamping polish, not only is it air dry, they do dry a little bit quicker than regular nail lacquer. So I do need to work a little bit quicker so it doesn't dry on me. So I'm just very carefully picking up some of that polish and filling in that little ear area, that like inner ear, I thought it would be really cute pink. So it's a really small area, so I have to be really careful about where I color in. And I also want to be careful that I'm not like dragging my brush because I don't want to disrupt my black outline because while the polish is dry, I can still like pick it up or smudge it with a, with wet polish so I want to be careful so I'm going to keep doing this for some other colors as well so this is the purple I'm using which is bluebell I think was the name I missed it it went too fast so I'm going to continue coloring in Sometimes I don't have the patience to do reverse stamping and it's more about just wanting to get the mani done rather than like taking the time to do the reverse stamping, even though it's fairly quick. But when I do do it, there is something relaxing about it. Like I have some adult coloring books. I actually haven't used them in quite a while, but there was something about, you know, kind of occupying yourself, but kind of decompressing that I really enjoyed doing that. And I find this is like similar as well of just kind of doing something to decompress and relax. I'm not sure. I don't know, do you feel that way about coloring or is there something that you enjoy doing to kind of decompress? And by the way, I am so sorry for the reflection in the stamping plate of my ceiling fan. That's the one most difficult thing about recording stamping is the plates are so reflective that you kind of see, sometimes you can see my face in it or whatever I'm doing. Here you can see the ceiling fan. It's kind of bothering me, but I didn't want to cut that part out. So hopefully you can just ignore that. After I finish with all my colors, I want to give them a couple minutes to fully dry and then I want to fill in the rest of the bunny using white. So this is BAM white. So I'm just putting a little bit of that on my stamping plate just to make it easier to pick up. And then I'm going to use my liner brush to make sure that I'm filling in the rest of the area. So I can color over the colored areas because those are completely dry. But similar to like I mentioned before, you want to make sure that you're not dragging your brush because you can disrupt that polish or move it or smudge it or whatever so I'm just kind of making sure that I'm very carefully filling in those areas and if I overlap colors I would just make sure that I'm not dragging my brush so I don't disrupt those colors and I did speed this up just a little bit because while it's relaxing for me to do I don't know whether it's relaxing for you to watch or not so I didn't want it to take too long
Isn't that bunny just the cutest? So now that I'm done filling everything in, I wanna make sure that my polish is fully dry. So I set that aside, give it time to dry. And while it's drying, I do need something tacky for it to stick to because the polish is dry, it's not gonna just stick to my nail. So I am using my sticky base coat from Maniology. And so for a sticky base coat, you don't want to apply your stamping when it's wet. You want to make sure that it gets tacky. So I usually wait like a minute or so for it to get to that tacky state. It'll start looking a little matte. I don't want it to fully dry because then it loses its stickiness. So I just try to find like that sweet spot of when it starts looking a little matte, it's a little tacky. And then when I get to that point, I will go ahead and stamp on that design. I'm going to work on my next image using BAM White, so I'm applying the polish to that image and then I'm going to scrape my polish at a 45 degree angle using my scraper and then to pick it up I'm going to roll my stamper very gently onto the image to pick it up and then once again I'm going to use some scotch tape to remove any of that excess image. So this is UR Bunny Special and I decided because Bunny was larger I wanted it in a different color. So I'm gonna use that tape and I'm gonna very carefully just remove the bunny part of this image. So I have to be pretty precise because I don't wanna remove anything else. I applied my sticky base coat and I'm waiting for it to get to that tacky point. And once it's at that tacky point, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the image to my nail. So I'm just figuring out where I wanna place it. And then when I have it where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and press down and that's gonna transfer the image from my stamper to my nail. I'm going to go ahead and clean off my plate. So this is using a lint-free wipe and some acetone to clean off the polish. And so next I'm going to use Rosebud, which is that pink that I used earlier. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to apply the polish to the plate, scrape down at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to roll my stamper to pick up that image, but I just want the bunny because everything else I used with the BAM white. So I'm going to once again, take my tape and remove everything, the excess image plus I'm going to remove anything else besides the bunny because I only want the bunny part of this design. Once my stamping is dry, I'm going to go ahead and protect it using a layer of smudge-free top coat. This one is from Maniology. So because I'm using a dip top coat, I do need a layer of activator to dry the dip top coat. And if I were to apply activator straight on top of my stamping without this smudge-free top coat, it would smear and smudge the polished design. So I want to make sure I'm protecting it with something. So I prefer to use the smudge free top coat because it doesn't create a lot of bulk, but I also could do just a layer of dip base and dip into clear to protect my stamping. So once that smudge free top coat is dry, probably about two minutes or so, it's fairly quick. I'm going to go ahead and apply my activator. So I'm doing the rest of my nails first, just to give my smudge free top coat, just a little extra time to dry. And then once I get to those nails, I'm going to kind of float and kind of dot on the activator on those nails. I don't want to drag the activator brush because then I could disrupt that smudge free top coat. So I'm just being very, very careful when I'm applying that activator. And I'm going to give my activator two full minutes to fully dry and then I'm going to go in with my dip top coat. So for my first layer, I'm going to apply my top coat in two to three really quick swipes on each nail. I'm going to make sure to wipe my brush on a lint-free wipe, This, in this case a paper towel, in between each nail. And I did realize, and not till I did this voiceover, that I actually used my glue, which is my dip base, instead of my gloss, which was my top coat. But I mean, it turned out super shiny anyway, so good to know.
As always, I'm going to finish off my mani by rehydrating my cuticles with my Scales of Mermaid cuticle oil. This is in the newly released limited edition set, Ah Choose You, and the name is so clever. I love the play on like spring allergies, but this scent, let me tell you, it is so hard to describe Pat's scents because the blends are just so amazing. But it's like a bright, florally, citrusy, kind of really just bright scent, if that makes any sense. But it is so good. I am obsessed with this one. Make sure you grab it before it's gone because it is a limited edition and you can always use my ambassador code Genie10 to save 10% off your orders. So that pretty much wraps up today's video. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope this video is helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue creating content like this and it also helps you to recommend me to others which helps grow my channel if you haven't already please consider subscribing i upload content every monday and thursday at 9 30 a.m eastern standard time as always i appreciate you being here thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye